Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, largest time for given digits. All right. So in this question, we're given an array of four digits and we need to return the largest 24 hour time that can be made. So the smallest 24 hour time is uh, 0000 and the largest 24 hour time is 2359. So starting from uh, four zeros, a time is larger if more time has elapsed since midnight. So the smallest time is, well, midnight, and the largest time is 11.59 or 23.59. Okay, so in this case, we're given the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, the largest time is, well, 23.41. And over here, we're given 5.555. Five, 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 five. Well, that's, that time does not even exist, right? So in that case, we're just going to output an empty string. So how can we actually solve this question? So it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to find all of the possible permutations for this. So what is the number of permutations we have? So in this case, it's going to be 4 factorial. And the reason it's 4 factorial is because over here, we can have one of the four numbers. Over here, we have one of the three fact uh, numbers. And over here, one of the two numbers. And over here, the final number. So 4 multiplied by 3 into 2 into 1, which is 24. So we have a total of 24 different combinations. And out of those 24 combinations, we need to find which one is the largest and is the valid one. So how do we know whether it's valid or not? And the answer to that is, wait, it's over here. So if something is, so the highest is we have is 23. So if we find something with 23 hours, we're gonna insert that. And if we find something of 59, we're gonna insert that. If that's not the case, we're just gonna insert whatever is closest to this value. And that's just gonna be our largest. So it's actually pretty simple to do. And let's see how we can do that using Python. All right, so what we want to do is we want to be able to find all of the permutations. So in order to do that, we can uh, use iter tools for doing that. So what we're going to do, let's import that first. So from iter tools, we're going to import uh, permutations. So permutations. OK, so we can use this in order to find all of the possible permutations. But before we find the permutations, what we're going to do is we're going to sort our array so we're going to sort A, and we're going to sort it in a descending order. So in order to do that, you're going to do reverse equals to true. OK, and why are we doing it in a descending order? So the reason for that is then when we're doing it from in descending order, we get the largest to smallest numbers. And what we can do is once we find whatever fits our parameters of being less than 24 and less than 60, then that is our largest possible answer, and we're done. And we can stop uh, iterating through the other possibilities. And one more thing we're doing is we're first we're sorting our array first before we're actually um, finding its permutations. And the reason for that is pretty simple. So you right now we're sorting four uh, just four numbers. But if we first find all the permutations, we'd end up with twenty four combinations. So in that case, we'd have to uh, sort twenty four different combinations. And obviously, sorting four things is faster than sorting twenty four things. OK, so that's why we're sorting it first. And after we do that, so let's just go to our array and we're going to find all of its permutations. So we'll, we'll find it in a list. And over here, we can call permutations. So permutations. And what do we want to find permutations for? Well, we want to find it for our array. And instead of writing it like this, we could just put this all inside of the same um, line. So this over here is going to end up coming over here. And we're going to add the two brackets at the end of here. OK, so yeah, all we're doing is we're just putting all of that into one line. Okay, so now we're going to iterate through each of our permutations. So for doing that, we can just do for x in array. And that's going to give us each of our permutations. But what we can do is let's actually iterate it being more specific. So what we're going to get, let's try to get each and every single variable. So our first variable is going to be uh, the hours, so h1 and h2. So that'll just represent the tens digit of the hour and the zero digit. And then after that, we're going to have M1 and M2. So the tens digit of the minutes and the units digit for the minutes. OK, so we have that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find out what that hour value is. So to do that, we can just call it in a variable called hours. And how do we find this value? Well, it's pretty simple. So H1 was our tenth digit uh, in the tens uh, place. So we're just going to do h1 multiplied by 10, we're going to add h2 to that. So that's the number of hours we have. And for minutes, I'll just call them mins. And this is going to be m1 multiplied by 10. 
And then we're going to add M2 to that. Okay. And over here, we're going to check whether this is valid or not. So how can we check if it's valid? So what we can do is we can check if the hours is less than 24 and the minutes is less than 60. And the reason we got these two numbers is because of this 2359. Yeah. So if that is the case, that means that we found our largest possible time. So now that we have this, we're just going to return it. So return, and we need to return it in how they asked us to do so. So let's just use F strings to do that. And first we're going to give our two, then we're going to have our one, then we have the semicolon or colon, and then we're going to have minutes two and then minutes one. Okay, so we're going to end up returning whatever the largest time is and we're done. But if we go through all of our permutations and nothing actually is a valid time or uh, yeah, so if nothing is actually a valid time, and in that case, we're just going to end up returning an empty area. So we're just going to end up returning this. And if you want to save on more memory and make it faster, uh, you could just call this over here directly. And you could just call this over here directly instead of storing it uh, inside of a variable. So we'll just get rid of all this. And uh, yeah, it's just the same thing. And yeah, so let's submit this and let's see what happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Small mistake. This is supposed to be H1. So this is supposed to be H1 and this is supposed to be H2. Okay, so now let's submit our code. Okay, I made the same mistake for the minutes. This is M1 and this is M2. All right, sorry guys. Okay, this should work for sure. Let's submit. Okay, and as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.